It is now 12 minutes after 7 time for us to get into the newsroom where we look at some of the stories that have been making headlines, possibly the challenges that we go through as we try and get those stories out. Now, you are welcome to participate in this conversation and you can do that via Twitter. The Twitter handles are going to be displayed as we carry on with the conversation. You can also call. We're going to open up the phone lines because we'd like to hear from you because at the end of the day, we are here to serve you as the public, members of the public. And to have that conversation, Conversation. Let me introduce the panel that we have here this morning, and I'll start with the lady, and that is Kokyo Ching, who is a lecturer in journalism and communication at USIU. Good morning. Thank Good you for morning. joining us. We also have Victor Buire, who is a programs manager at Media Council of Kenya. Morning. Karibu sana. Sante. And last but not least, we have Eric Latif, who is a journalist. Good morning, Good morning, lady and gentlemen. Good morning. All right. Now, it's been a very um, active time, let me say, from the 8th of August uh, with uh, the elections being annulled and a new date being set. We've got NASA having their irreducible minimums. And there's also been a lot of uh, what we'd call exposés, quote, unquote, if indeed there are exposés that have come out. But let's start off, first of all, with the challenges that we possibly are going through as the media. You have the politicians with their story coming out and giving out what they say is the truth. You have, for instance, IEBC coming out and giving what they say is their version of the truth. The latest now is we have Safaricom also now being dragged into uh, the uh, whole election bungling story. And let me start with you, Koki, possibly on the challenge that we have as members of the fourth estate to still remain credible and give what is now the truth. Mm -hmm. I think uh, one of the challenges that is faced, uh, that is facing media, not just in Kenya, and studies have been done around it, is the idea of mediatization, where you know the, the the sources of your information or the sources of your stories basically use what we call media logic. Mm. They play out uh, the scenes that media would pay attention to. And now you have the politicians who have learned the art. Mm. They have learned the processes of how stories get into the media house. They have learned how to behave. They have learned how to make uh, remarks that would capture you know, the attention, the attention and basically demonstrate uh, that the, 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 dog, the man is eating the dog. Mm. So <laughs> now they, they, you have actors out there who know exactly what to do. Mm. And then, of course, we with the cameras want to be the first to tell the story, want to be the first to send, uh, you know, we, with the hottest news, and we go for them. So we, you are under siege <laughs> by your own sources. <laughs> by our own sources. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. And uh, truth be told, we know that in media, for you to get a good story out there, for it to make sense, for it to be relevant, it needs to have emotion. Make people laugh, make them cry, make them angry. And possibly, like uh, Koki is saying, um, politicians have also now learned the art of acting. If it, you know, the, if it will get emotional, if it will get people going. Latif, how do we ensure that we're not just uh, rolling cameras for actors, but we are also still getting the truth? And at the end of the day, we also need the numbers. It's a delicate balance, I think, because... Um those are the news sources, like Koki says. The, the sources of the news are the same, same politicians, but then they are not the only sources of news. So it's, it's a matter of, of, of knowing when to cover and what to cover and to what extent. But also the follow-up angle, I think that's where um, the meat now comes in. Mm -hmm. when, when you start now putting the meat onto that bone that the politician has provided, uh, it's, it's going either to, to credit their story or to discredit their claims. Uh, and I think that's where the, the tough part now starts coming in. Mm -hmm. uh, instead of just regurgitating what the, the politician has said, it's coming back and saying, uh, what's, what's, a, what's the truth? What's the story behind uh, the story? What's the story behind the story? Mm. Uh, is there some element of truth in this? If we say that uh, data was being transmitted from uh, polling center mm -hmm. X and just uh, sitting somewhere in the cloud, or it was just going to France and it never came to Kenya, is there some truth to that? And mm -hmm. what... What are they using as their basis of evidence to, to say this, for instance? Mm -hmm. And I think that's where now the media starts getting that challenge of, of following through a story. Mm -hmm. All right, Victor, 
have we managed to follow those stories through? And like I mentioned from the 8th of, or let me say from the 1st of September when the Supreme Court uh, annulled the, uh, the, the presidential election, there's been all sorts of stories being told of what happened or what did not happen. Have we managed to inform the public and give them a clear picture of what is truth and what is propaganda and what is spin? Thank you, Mike. One, we have not. We are chasing. The media is chasing. And in the process of chasing stories and the breaking news and training, we have missed out a big, a big chunk. Simply because, uh, and, and, and looking at the media scene, and this is something that people need to invest in, the issue of media literacy. Mm. Do people understand how media operates in this country? Because those uh, fake news, those planted stories, those uh, exposés we are talking about, those tips, are not done by the politicians as you think. Mm -hmm. All these politicians have senior editors, former senior journalists around them. So these are very calculated uh, moves. Uh, uh, talk to I mean, talk to NASA. Uh, I mean, you, you remember the, the, the communication team, very senior, experienced journalists. Talk to Jubilee and the government, very senior. Uh, I mean, former journalists and journalists around them. So most of the things that are happening are purely planned things, where uh, most of them have been advised how media operates, how, what to do. You release news at five, every media is looking for a page one story. <laughs> Call, uh, act over the weekend, Sunday, when it's a dry day, and you'll get coverage. So, 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 so what we have been doing is we are chasing. <laughs> so once you start chasing, then you miss out a big time. So that we are, we are just helping people publicize what they want, mm -hmm. not what we as media ought to do. Mm -hmm. Yes, it can be tips, it can help us unravel stories, mm -hmm. but what is happening, the issue of petitions, counter petitions, fake news, forged documents all over the internet, we are just following. And, and, you know, and we have seen the last one week, the legal suits that have been given against media houses across, mm -hmm. uh, simply because of that. So it calls for a lot of caution uh, on the media that yes, we can use those things as tips, but we need to do our own own way because, oh. because, because those politicians, those uh, groups, we had, our sources, are more prepared than the media itself. <laughs> okay, and, and what ails us? Because, I mean, there is, when we're breaking the story, I mean, if there's a press conference, really everybody is there to hear what is there to be said. Mm -hmm. So that's one layer. But the second layer is after the press conference uh, to dissect what has been said and whether, you know, it is true or not. What is it that ails us? Because we, we know that. From, from what the three of you have said, we know that uh, we ought to be, you know, following up the stories, but we seem not to be following. Is it, is it that because of uh, this team that you're talking about of media practitioners who are now work, uh, po stroke politicians, they are so well oiled to a point where they keep us chasing, we have no time to now do research on whatever they gave us last time. That's By the yeah. time you're, you're trying to chase one thing, there's already a new one coming That's up. That's the fact of the matter. <laughs> that that, 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 that uh, uh, we are dealing with people who are more sophisticated mm -hmm. than the media. So what we are doing, and also there's also an information overload, like uh, Koki said. Yeah. There's too much. There's averagely nowadays about 20 press conferences in a day in Nairobi only. Go to the counties. So there's too much information that, and 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 we uh, in the process of trying, especially now uh, the, the live broadcast, mm -hmm. big challenge. We want, each of our TV stations want to show live broadcasts. Right. Mm. And in that sense, we are broadcasting even things that we, there's no time to process and editors to guide. Out of all these things, where, where do we focus and where don't we focus? Mm. So, mm. So, so in that sense, I think the, the bigger sense is we need to revisit and, and just sit back and say, what do we follow? What do we want to show people right. instead of chasing? I think talk. it's unfortunate that media practitioners would take their professional for granted. I know it is good that you can find an opportunity to serve in a political environment and to give, you know, but if you give out the secrets of your profession mm -hmm. and then you work against it and yet you are the people who are talking about the industry collapsing, I think it's unfortunate because at the end of the day, it leaves the, the fraternity in, in kind of um, a limbo because you have senior <laughs> practitioners. In fact, I had some names and I was like, okay, what's going on? Mm -hmm. People who've been associated with, uh, you know, maybe development issues, you know, political analysis, and uh, now they are spin doctors. In fact, media has uh, become a tactic, not even, you know, a, 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 an industry, but a tactic for PR spins, right. uh, which I feel is uh, quite unfortunate. However, this is not just unique to our country. Mm. It is actually the concept, and uh, we shared with Victor on, on some forum, mm. media is captured. 
and where media is captured by all these you know, forces, uh, do, does the media reflect and think of who they really have to serve? Is, are they existent because of public uh, interest? And if then, what do they need to be able to ensure that they actually are going to meet the needs of the public? Mm -hmm. Then is, there, is it the need for advertisements? Is it the, who is controlling the industry mm -hmm. and what are their interests? Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, the practitioners themselves are the key to all the drama that's going on. Wow, I agree on a, to some extent with Koki, but I, I think let's not demonize the ones that have moved mm -hmm. to actually practice spin. Because spin is an industry by itself, and it's it's. But does that go against the, 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 the what would call maybe the principles of journalism? <laughs> no, it really it doesn't. It's a job. Spinning is a job. I mean, that's what that's why you have you 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 have these positions in these political parties. And you, what you want to do is you want to spin public opinion. You want to shape public opinion from your end, and in that end, it's not about objectivity. It's about what you get out of it. The challenge that comes is, I think, now from the newsrooms themselves. When the practitioners in the newsroom become part and parcel of the practitioners outside the newsroom, that's where we have a problem. And I think sometimes we, we, we just see newsrooms are getting caught up in this whole um, sensationalism, uh, sensationalism and, and that kind of journalism, where this thing has happened and we want to run with it because also my source is my guy who used to be here and now he's a uh, senior director of communications in a certain political campaign. Mm. And you know, we, we still haven't seen that this guy has moved, he's now on the other side mm -hmm. as a source of news and I have to remain on this side and be steadfast on you know the story. Yes, you're coming, you're giving me a spin, but you know I have to go and I have to establish the truth behind, the truth behind what you're telling story. me. Mm -hmm. we, are running, we are running with it because you're thinking, this guy taught me journalism. I mean, this guy, I, I, I trust him, I, I believe him. Mm -hmm. He was my senior, he just left, he went and joined the political <laughs> campaign. That should not be the case. Yeah, so, Koki, so do you have a problem then with training? Because <laughs> then, uh, we, if we can't draw that <laughs> distinction um, uh, from a professional capacity, because yeah. this is not about me knowing Eric Latif and mm -hmm. his my friend, uh, I also have a profession to, 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 you know, to safeguard. That, that, that's what I'm saying in spite of what Eric is saying. It's true it is a job. And it's true that it is, I mean, you're allowed to step out. But what he's saying, crossing that line as a professional, knowing very well that you will kind of, um, how can I say, you will kind of uh, use the big brother syndrome on those who remain in the media house and mm. you know tag them along because you did this one, two, three things for them, mm. then it becomes unfortunate. We can then say that uh, I don't see the legal profession or doctors really undermine those who are senior, but there's still some respect in terms of what you're doing at a given time. Imagine right. if uh, the lawyers were shouting at the judges <laughs> or, you know, that kind of play where you, you, you're kind of subjected to some intimidation of some sort so that you can tell a story. And, and how is that different from when we have uh, legislators possibly uh, ple ple uh, pleading allegiance to, um, you know, like the executive for them to, I mean, after all, you're the one who gave me the job, so I cannot, you know, do what I'm supposed to do on the ground. Uh, and, and would that be the same scenario, Victor? Thanks. Mike. Or a similar the, one? The, the <laughs> biggest challenge, like colleagues said, Eric, and it's not those people who, who we know, because it's a job. The problem is the people who have remained in the newsroom, but they are playing double. <laughs> you know, they are still here in the newsroom, but they are communication like advisors. they are from two, yeah. two sources. Yes, they are the communication <laughs> advisors, they are the, the spin dogs for other people. Mm -hmm. So that they are noosing in the newsroom, sharing or breaking stories that obviously to any professional journalist wouldn't do. And, and, and I belong to about 16 or so WhatsApp groups for journalists. And sometimes the things you see, you wonder if is this, are this, I mean, yesterday we had a serious discussion. There was a story from Mombasa, for example. Joho has been arrested. Mm. And the journalists themselves were asking themselves, is he arrested? Has he gone to a police? And, and, and already one of our media houses had already broken. And somebody's asking, I mean, Joho has just gone to a police, a police station. station. So those are sometimes, <laughs> it's purely the people in the in, within the newsroom mm. who are, and it's not that they don't know. 
Because look away from our, uh, our political pages. Mm. Go the inside the specialized pages, the business desk, the mm. Thursday magazines. Well thought out, nice articles, nice discussions. We are winning CNN awards. We are winning. The problem seems just to be on the political desk. Mm. <laughs> I mean, where <laughs> everything seems just to lose. The same person writes very well thought out stories on other things. But when it comes to politics, so, so, so it's not about even training. It's just that people have just... Uh, ignored their professional. So, so mm. Victor, there, there has got to be a reason why that is happening. Now, you've articulated it and said when it yeah. comes to the business desk, it seems that we seem to be getting it right when it comes to, even when it comes to things like farming. Yes, you'll find very well put articles, well researched with time. So what is the, what is the seed that is uh, eating us up when it comes to politics? Could it be a lucrative uh, desk, which maybe there's a lot of money changing hands, maybe brown envelope journalists? There's, there's also, I think, the, the something that we can't really run away from. Um, there's partisanship. You know, there's, uh, there, these are political campaigns. And there's, there's somebody, the person that you support. And there's a reason that you support them. And you feel that you're in a position, you know, you've, you get carried away. Like I said, it's sensationalism, but as well, you feel you get carried away by your personal opinion and, and feelings about a certain uh, political campaign mm. that, you know, you, you you will hear that story of so and so has been arrested, and you're like, "Oh my God, they have arrested so -and -so. again!" You, know, <laughs> you immediately you want to throw it out, eh? and and you're thinking, "If indeed I have confirmed he's at the police station, therefore he's been arrested." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, how he ended up there is not the issue. I, if he's at the police station, he's been arrested, and you've just sent a text, "Ukwapi, central." That's it. <laughs> I, I think also, what are the, the, the frames that we use for political uh, reporting? If there are conflict frames, I think you want to talk about somebody against someone all the time. Of course, it has that emotive kind of um, you know, implication. But I think that uh, if, if the journalist took another angle, like he says, if he was arrested and one of you says he went to the police station, where is the process? I mean, we, we don't want to ask that question in Kenya today. <laughs> but where is the journalistic process of, uh, you know, civilians? I mean, uh, you, know, uh, you know, looking for verification, mm. looking for sources. Where is the process? It can't be that we as journalists decide that, you know, for some area of reporting that we will go partisan and emotional about it. Right. Unless there's another underlying issue that is triggering that besides of course we have beliefs in whatever circumstance mm -hmm. but i think it's important to be informed that uh, the, the implication of telling that story in that particular manner uh, you know leaves out a lot i just heard about uh, what is happening yesterday in court with Babu Owino. I, I believe that it is important that the media tells us, you know, what is the presidency? Mm. Things that we take for granted. What does it mean when you, you, when you, you agree with the presidency? Uh, whoever or whatever or whichever institution that is. Right. Yeah, and if personal insults are part of that. Are part of that. Yeah. And that, that's, that's a conversation that we're going to have because another thing that remains, and especially now that we're on a very um, tense political atmosphere, is hate speech. Because what is hate speech? If I called, <laughs> uh, or if Latif called me a name, is that hate speech? Uh, and does that change? If then Latif calls the president the same name, uh, in a public forum, does that change? So we'll have that discussion. But Victor, maybe just to, before we take a break, I want us to take a break, but just before we take that break, uh, what is it that is causing that to happen? Is it that we are not well-trained as journalists? Is it that we have become so political? Is it that our emotions are taking us over and to a point where now it's taking over the pen? I think because where is reason? That, that, that's where you are. Because the training issue, I doubt if it's an issue. Mm. We have very well-trained people. And I, I keep on repeating this. Go to Al Jazeera office in, in Kenya. Go to BBC office yeah. in Kenya. It's full of Kenyans. Yeah. Doing very well, BBC. And, so it can't be training. Uh, so, so we move away. We, we look at our training. <laughs> move what is it that makes our political reporting uh, this almost, almost where people don't even check for basic things? Mm. I mean... Is it what Eric was talking about, where your former editor has given you a story and telling you, you know, is it, is get it this that? Story in yes, somehow. is it that? Because sometimes, and, and I was looking yesterday, uh, frankly speaking, because I follow media all the time, I was looking at uh, Denison Sarigo's tweet and uh, James Smart, and uh, uh, quite a number of journalists are asking them, these are journalists working in newsrooms, and they're asking about themselves, we can't have a media, you know, if almost all journalists are criticizing media. 
all the, almost all the girls I know, including myself, we have become media critics. Mm. So who is in charge of media? <laughs> it, talks of, it but, talks of something that is seriously in this country that our media is not in the hands of journalists. Mm. But I think you, we, we are small players. It is important yeah. to critique because then you begin to ask yourselves, really, is media a friend of journalists? That's or journalism that, 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 per that, se. Is the media economy fit for you to be objective and tell the stories uh, uh, that you should be telling? Mm. Uh, are there other spaces that we need to create to seriously interrogate what's going on? I'll ask you to hold that thought because I want us to take a break. It's now 28 minutes to 8. This is the newsroom. When we come back, let's answer that question. Um, whether maybe we need to consider other spaces, uh, like Koki mentions, uh, as part of media, because it seems that we are dissatisfied with ourselves and we are just creating other spaces. So this is Newsroom. We'll take a short break. We'll be right back.